Thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. With your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nations. Hi, I'm Minister Marilyn Jones. And I'm Pastor Simon Jones from New Birth Christian Center in Stockton. We're so glad that you've decided to join us in worship today. The scripture says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In these uncertain times, we need a word from the Lord. Come with us in the service. You're amazing, you're wonderful, you're beauty. And with everything going on, God, and it's easy for us to lose sight. Open the eyes of my heart, God, so we can see you the way that you want us to see you. Let's not lose sight that you're a provider, you're a healer, you're a protector. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Testify, Testify that you're Jesus. 
When your strength is made perfect, like no other. so glad it reaches. reaches me. You are my strength. You are my strength. This is to encourage you wherever you're at.
when the world is crashing down. It is now tithing offering time here at New Birth Christian Center. At New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessing to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the need in our community. Through financial resource, we're able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. God bless you. Please enjoy the rest of the service. Lord bless you and it's good to be here on this morning from our life room, the sanctuary here at New Birth Christian Center to your life room, wherever you are sitting at home or wherever you are uh, with us on this morning. It's time we've been in praise and worship and we thank God for an awesome opportunity to lift his name up one more time. We say it's with the made up mind that we're going to make it. Somebody needs to declare right there from your life room, I'm going to make it and everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. With a made up mind. With a made up mind. I 
I intend to go all the way through. If it costs my life, I'm willing to pay the price because I've got heaven in my view. Say it again this morning. It's with a made a made a made up mind. With a made up mind, I intend to go. say this today if it costs if it costs my life I'm willing to pay the price because I've got I've got heaven in my view And if it means that I might have to, I might have to walk all alone. And if it means that my friends may be few. It's all right with me because you see that I'm not worried about what people may say or what they may do because I've got, I've got heaven in my view hear me clearly and if it means if it means that I might have to walk walk all alone and if it means My friends, that they may be few, that's really all right with me. You see, because I'm not worried about what people may say or what they may do. Because I've got heaven, we can say it today, I've got, I've got heaven, every day of my life I'll say I've got, I've got heaven in my view. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus on today. I've got heaven not just on my mind, but I've got heaven in my view. I appreciate the Lord and his goodness on today. While we're coming through a crazy week, we can look and we can see Jesus through it all. 
the writer said I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God and then at the end of that he said I've learned to depend upon his word it's the word of God that's going to carry us through this season listen we have been praying and we continue to pray we've been getting prayer requests almost on a daily basis for those of you who have messaged us and called us and let us know that you are in need of prayer hear what i'm saying we are praying daily for you i believe it was andre crouch who wrote a song that said somebody somewhere is praying just for you and we want you to know that New Birth Christian Center, Pastor Lawanda and I, and the New Birth Christian Center family, we are praying for you. And even when we cannot touch physically, even when we cannot touch physically, we want you to know that there is no distance in the power of prayer. And we thank God for uh, this morning being able just to be with you for another day in the presence of the Lord. We have um, gone through this week the horrible things that have gone on in our country. You know, it's something when you look at the news and you look like a foreign land. It's something we've watched on television for years happening in other countries. And we watched it play out on our soil. And it's what I've been saying for many years. It's not a president that's going to change our situation because presidents are going to come and they're going to go. Politics are going to be played in and out. But we're going to come really to the knowledge that God really is in control. Look at someone around you and just encourage them to know that God is in control. And we thank him because he is. Amen. We have been talking and uh, on last week, we um, talked about, began to talk about our theme for the year. And one of the things I do is I pray about what it is the Lord is speaking to us. Uh, for this for this year what is God saying currently to the church and uh, the Lord told me it's time for a reset uh, the last almost the last quarter uh, the last couple of months of 2020 uh, the Lord dealt with the harvest and and I said this on last week one of the things we know about harvest is harvest is an ongoing process. And after you come to the place of harvest, because harvest is work, then you celebrate and reset for the next harvest. I'm, 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 I'm appreciative of the Lord for this next harvest. I thank the Lord for what he did in 2020. I thank God, hear what I'm saying. God has been good to us. God has been good to our nation. New Birth Christian Center, God has been good to us. Loved ones and friends, God has been good to us. I know that we've lost some folk. and uh, Some folk have had uh, some tough times. There are people who have lost jobs. And, 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 and we're seeing, and, and, and part of the big news right now is that we're seeing those who have never been in a food line having to stop and receive food. Let me say something to you, especially those of you who have never been in the place you're in right now. Number one, it's seasonal. This is a season we're going to come through. Number two, everything you need, you get. Don't be afraid to receive what it is you need for your families. God will provide and God uses people to get us through these seasons. So whatever it is you need, first you thank God that it's been provided. And you get up and you go get and take care of your house. Amen. Uh, I, I, I was speaking about uh, the chaos that we saw in this week. And, and, and it must be condemned and it must be dealt with. Uh, 
but I thank God in the midst of chaos, he is still a place of peace. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is everything that we need. Uh, in, in a moment, I, I want you to, or you can take your Bibles and go with me right now to Luke the eighth chapter. Um, I appreciate and, and, and love you all, New Birth. I get a chance on and off uh, to talk with you. Pastor Lawanda is talking with uh, the saints of God uh, on, on, on a daily basis. And we want you to know that we love you and we appreciate you. For those who watch across country, our friends and family who, who, who are able to look in and view. And we want you to know that we love you. We miss you. And we're praying for you all across the country. Uh, Luke, the eighth chapter. And I'm going to start reading um, from the 43rd, excuse, yeah, the 40, excuse me, 43rd verse. And it reads, And a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and could not be healed by anyone came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Jesus said, who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. But Jesus said, someone did touch me for I was aware that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came trembling and fell before him and declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And I'm going to stay with uh, the topic I started with on last week. The reset. Push the button. Tell someone around you or tell yourself if you're the only one in the room, push the button. Uh, in this year, of, 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 of reset, there, is, there, there are some things that the Lord wants to do for us and, and, and it, it, it must go past our claiming it and sitting somewhere and waiting for it to happen. It must go past, uh, you know, and, and claiming it is, is, is a great part of it, but you've got to get up and go get it. The things that the Lord has for you, uh, he, he, he wants us to get up and go get. And, and we talk and we're talking, remember, we're talking about the reset, to set again or differently, to set again or differently. And some of the other words we use were revalue, to adjust, to reappraise, to reevaluate, to reassess. And we're going to talk about pressing a little bit on today. Uh, uh, and, 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 and we know that uh, there are some things we must do. If, we're, if it's going to happen, we must pray, we must practice, and we must provoke until something happens. We must pray, we must practice, and we must provoke until something happens. Somebody repeat that. We must pray, we must pray practice and we must provoke until something happens. Now, this woman uh, who, who, who we preach about all the time, and, and, and you're going to hear me, I, I want you to say this with me, get there and then get there and then get there and then get there. <laughs> get there and then get there and then get there, and then get there. You see, the first place that we must get there is in our minds. 
uh, we see, and, and, and you're going to hear me uh, uh, talk uh, between Luke the 8th chapter and Mark the 5th chapter, referencing Mark the 5th chapter. I use this chapter uh, because of the length of time. I, 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 and I want it, but, but I'm going to refer uh, many times to Mark the 5th chapter. And, and, and when we see uh, what I'm talking about, the first place you've got to get there is in your mind. This woman dealing with the things that, 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 that she's been dealing with now for 12 years, and 12 years is a long time for anything to ha have to deal with, any kind of situation to have to deal with for 12 years is a long time. But we see that Jairus, who has a daughter who is 12 years old, uh, uh, in invites Jesus and asks him and worships him as at his feet asking him to come to his home because his daughter is at the point of death and Jesus agrees to go with him and when they agree to go uh, this woman begins to step in uh, where, where, where Jesus is on his way somewhere else let me tell you God being the many breasted one has enough miracles for you and for me at the same time and he can bless you while he's on his way to do my miracle that that's the kind of God we serve. He cares for us. Jesus is on his way somewhere. And, 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 and the woman reaches out to touch him. A, a, a woman is made up in her mind. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not starting at the top verse because there's somewhere I want to go. I, I'm looking at the progression of this thing. And she starts in her mind in, in, in Mark the 20 or the fifth chapter, uh, the 28th verse. Uh, she says, if I touch him, I will be well. You see, there's a place you've got to get to in your mind. There's a place you've got to, you, you, you see, and we look at the mindset of this woman. Uh, if I can get there, if I can touch him, I'll be well. Now, I don't know whether she said that at home or when she said it, when she got to Jesus, but something inside of her had to say uh, after she, because the Bible says that she heard he was coming through. Somebody told her, Jesus is passing this way. My God. Somebody told her, there's a move of God. Somebody told her, Jesus is moving. Somebody told her, Jesus is present. Honey, understand, even when you don't know that he's moving, God will send somebody to tell you there's a move going on. from her house because she was bound to her house because of what she was going through. In Leviticus, we know that the law had said if, 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 if you are bleeding, if a woman is bleeding, as long as she is bleeding, she is confined. As long as she is bleeding, she is restricted. As long as she is bleeding, she can't move about the way she wants to. Hear me what I'm saying. There are those who in the spirit, you've been bleeding way too long. You've been confound too long. You've not been able to do what you've been called to do for too long because you've been bleeding. There's some issues going on. And a lot of times, instead of dealing with our issues, we just stay bleeding. Because to deal with our issues calls for confrontation. To deal with our issues, we've got to get out and risk somebody pointing at us or somebody talking about our business or somebody asking the question, oh, you, you don't have that problem anymore? We run the risk, you see. This woman is fighting a couple of things. She's fighting in her mind the battle of shame. People are fighting shame because of where we've been, because of what we've done. And we've done some shameful things in life. But you've got to understand, Jesus nailed all your shame to the cross. 
There's nothing else to be ashamed of. She's fighting the battle of shame. And understand, for a lot of people, the biggest battle is in me. The biggest battle, and, and, and we play it out and we take it out on other folks because we don't know how to deal with it when the enemy is in me. Because I'm shamed. And, and, and if, I, you know, if I start moving about, somebody who knows me from what I'm going through or what I've been going through may ask about my progress with my bleeding. Girl, how's that marriage doing? They already know you got problems. They just want to bring it to the forefront. They want somebody else to know. Not, 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 you see, because one thing about it, we all have had a bleed at one time or another. God saved us all from something. But it's our mind battle. So we've got to get there first in the mind. The first thing she's fighting is shame. The second thing she's battling is hopelessness. You know, some have, have, have hoped and, 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 and felt like they were let down and hoped again and let down and hoped again and let down. Remember, this woman has spent her life saving. She had spent everything she had going from doctor to doctor and hope being built up and, and then let down again and hope being built up. And it looks like we might be able to break through this time. No, not this time. And at the end of it, she's coming out feeling worse and worse every time you went for prayer and felt good at service and then got home and everything slammed against you again. You went for prayer for that job and got to the interview and they said, we're sorry the position has been filled and you built your hope up for this job and, 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 and then you built your hope up for this and you built your hope up for that and you let down, let down, let down and now you're at a place of hopelessness. Why even try? Why do it again? I'm just going to come to the same conclusion or worse. <laughs> so she had to get there in her mind that I'm going to leave my house. You've got to get there in your mind that you're going to get up out of what it is you're in. I, I, I was talking to one of my family members on the other day and I, I, I told him, you, you, you have to understand, I went through something for a year. 20 something years ago, uh, about 25 years ago, I went through something for a year. Fought depression for a year, deep depression for a year. And I, and, and I didn't, I, I thought that's how it was going to be for a long time. Uh, but thank God for a loving wife, a praying wife. Thank God for a pastor who was concerned enough about me to say, where well, you're not doing well, son. You're not, I, I, I'm ready to see the old you. Thank God I was challenged to step it up in my mind because I could go to church and get my job done. Didn't have a problem playing and singing. I could, I could get that done. The problem was after I left church and got home, I had to deal with the stuff that was still inside of me. I was fighting the hurt of losing a loved one. And the way he, he left here, being murdered. I was battling. Some of you are battling the loss of someone you love. I understand that hurt and that pain. And I understand maybe not your level of depression because I had my own. But I also understand that when I got it in my mind, I didn't want to be like that anymore. When I resolved that I needed a reset in my life, I wanted to laugh like I used to laugh. I wanted to sing like I used to sing. I wanted to be able to share with my family the way I used to. I would not have had enough. I said in my mind, I'm changing my location. Got up out of the bed. 
took the dark stuff off the window so the sun could shine through. That's my testimony. And I've never been back to that place because of one move. You see, I had to get there in my mind first so I could get there in my body. She got to the place where Jesus was. The 44th verse of the 8th chapter of Luke says she came behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. Somebody say, get there. You see, I got there in my mind, then I got there in my body. She got there in her mind where she said, if I can just get there and touch him, I'm going to be well. She got there in her mind, then she got there in her body. Where she could say, I made it. I made it to the crowd. Number one, you see, some people, you, 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 you've got to be able to pray for folk because some people can barely say, I made it. Thank God, I made it. You don't know who's going through what they're going through. Be thankful to God that you made it. Some people are just able to say, I made it. Thank God that I'm here. So the first place she made it was to the crowd. The second place she made it was through the crowd. Philippians, the third chapter, 12 four, through, through 14. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, putting everything behind me, I press. You see, you get to the place of the press. You get to the place where you, you, you see, first it's just getting there. The second thing is getting through the stuff you've got to get through. Some of you don't know who you're sitting next to in church. And you know, I, I, I know by tradition and by custom, we used to tell the folk, look at you just sitting in your seat. Get up on your feet. I ought to be ashamed of yourself. We're just yelling at folks. We don't know that some of them just got there and barely got there. Yes, we encourage you. And yes, there are some who know better and should be standing on their feet. But sometimes I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Sometimes I'm just glad to be able to sit there and sing the songs of Zion until my faith has been built to a place. I I know I need a miracle, but you may not understand the kind of miracle I need. So sometimes just let me get there. You see, if I can just get there in my mind that I fought to get here, now I've got my body here. Now that my body is here, I'm hearing the songs of Zion and I'm encouraged by those who are in the house. And now my body is encouraged to move a little further. My faith has been moved to the place where I'm ready to reach out for him now. I didn't feel like it before I got to church. Somebody didn't feel like it before you logged on today. Somebody didn't feel like it when you got up this morning. But now that you're here, thank you Jesus now that you're here you need to make up in your mind that I'm going to touch him today you see I've gotten there in my mind and I've gotten there in my body and now I'm going to get there in my spirit you see you've got you, that's the place in the spirit where you reach out and you touch him right there is where you push the button right there is where you begin to say I'm activating my faith some of those who want to just stay around Jesus but then there are those who want to reach out and touch the hem of his garment she said if I can just touch him everything is going to be all right if I can just touch him I'm going to be made well if I can just touch him if I can just touch him I've got no more money to give to anybody I've got nothing left of myself my mind has been humbled my body has been humbled and my spirit has been humbled and all I can do to get what I need is fall to my face 
Humble myself. Reach past somebody else who doesn't feel they need it as bad as I do. You see, maybe it was somebody's faith just to be close to Jesus. But my faith says, reach out and touch him. And if you touch him, everything's going to be all right. Ah, Paul told us in, in Philippians, the fourth chapter, don't call to mind the former things and don't you ponder on the things of old. Behold, I'm getting ready to do a new thing in you. Now you're going to know it. She said when she reached out to touch him, something began to happen in her body. God says on today, he's moving on your behalf. All you've got to do is keep touching him. It's time for a reset, but you've got to push the button. I've gotten there in my mind and I've gotten there in my body and I've gotten there in my spirit. And so now I can get there and grab hold of my miracle. The Bible says in the 44th verse, immediately the flow stopped. It's miracle time. Hear what I'm saying. Some of you have been praying and believing and it's time for that flow that's been draining you, that flow that's been killing you, that flow that's been eating up your finances, that flow that's got you in divorce court. It's time for that thing to stop. In the name above every name, the name of Jesus, immediately. You see, when God gets ready to work, it don't take a long time. <laughs> when God gets ready to move, doesn't take a long time for reset to take place. You see, the moment you push the button of faith, it doesn't matter what the number was. The moment you push that button to reset, it goes right back to zero. Now I'm talking about restoration to somebody. The writer said, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Let me, let me feel the joy that only God can give again. I, you, I, we're reading the prayer request and a lot of people have lost their joy in this season. Listen, we've got to pray for our children because they've lost their joy in this season. We've got to pray. Push until something happens. We've got to pray until something happens. We've got to practice until something happens. I don't know how many times that woman said to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. But she had to practice and rehearse it in her mind until it became perfect enough for her to reach out. She had to provoke. She had to be provoked. You see, because Jesus was moving and she had to be provoked to touch him where he was. Know this, that wherever you'll reach out to touch him, that's where he is. I know that there are those who are waiting for church doors to open. But New Birth Christian Center's church doors won't open until the Lord says it's time. I'm not talking about a governor. I'm not talking about the state, federal. I'm not talking about any of that. When God says it's time to open the doors, we open in the doors. But know this. God is bigger than this place. God is bigger than this campus. I love being at my New Birth Christian Center campus, but God is much larger than three acres. His blessings far surpass the boundaries of 1234 William Moss Boulevard. Somebody wrote a song bigger than. My God is bigger than. But I've got to keep pushing. Hear me, I want to encourage somebody this morning, keep pushing. I know you've been battling, I know you've been struggling, but I'm here to encourage you this morning. This morning, you've got to keep pushing, you've got to keep praying, practicing and provoking until something happens. Keep provoking in your home until something happens. You see, to be provoked is to be challenged. We're gonna pray. 
You've got to, it's my job to provoke you to keep pushing that plate away. It's my job to provoke people of God to pray one more time. We sang that song, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Your find is not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment your need he'll supply. Just reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Don't let this moment pass you by. We sang that song a couple of weeks ago. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do I don't want to be left out when it comes to what it is you're doing. I'm going to press. I'm going to get there so I can get there so I can get there so I can get there. I'm going to get there in my mind. Thank you, Jesus. Minds are tired. God strengthen my mind so I can get there in my body and make my body willing. Give my body strength to match up with what my mind is saying. I'm going to get there in my spirit. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to push the button, the reset button. So I can have the miracle. I'm going to get there in mind. Get there in body. So I can get there in spirit. So I can get there and touch my miracle the manifestation of God's promises by faith I'm going to get there by faith we talked about it Noah built an ark preached that it was going to rain laughed at by faith Abraham set out on a journey looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. By faith, you're going to step out this morning. By faith, you're going to speak blessings into your house. By faith, you're going to speak that new job into being. And by faith, you're going to get up and prepare yourself for everything that God has for you. Morning season is over. The things you've been mourning over. And don't, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm talking about some of the things that you've been through. Not the loss of a loved one. prophet said the spirit of the Lord is upon me he's anointed me to become an agent of transfer for the spirit of heaviness he's going to give you joy it's time to push the button the Lord wants to heal you right there where you are whether it be sickness physical or mental whatever it is Lord Jesus, right where we are, to every life room you've allowed me to speak into this morning. First, I thank you for allowing me to be there. But greater than my presence, greater than a TV screen or a computer screen or a phone screen is the presence of the Lord. And I speak it now to every home, to every person, to every pastor, who's watching right now, who's been troubled in their minds, God. Touch them. Those who are fighting shame and 
those this morning who are fighting hopelessness. You are the everlasting hope. You are our forever peace. So we come to you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before you endured the cross, despising the shame. We look to you, Savior. We ask you for a fresh touch. God, heal minds and heal bodies. Strengthen our faith that we might receive the miracle that it is you have for us. For those of you who don't know the Lord, I want you to repeat this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I stand before you a sinner. I acknowledge my sin and my wrong is always before you. You know me and you see me. So I ask you in this moment to come into my heart. I open my heart to you. Come in today and live in me for the rest of my life. Right now, I am your child. Right now, you are my father. For today and for always, in the name of Jesus, amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer, you right now are a new creature, brand new in Christ. And we want you to follow up this moment by letting us know that you've received the Lord Jesus into your heart. For those of you who need continued prayer for something else, you can, I know they've shown you on the screen how to contact. We want to say we thank God and for, 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 for all he's done. I'm going to receive the offering right now. We know. That's the tithe. And we say it every week. One dime out of every dollar belongs to God. And above that is the offering. That which we give with a free will and a glad heart. Later in the month we'll receive for New Birth Christian Center. We'll receive our first fruits offering. Unless someone who's outside of New Birth Christian Center wants to. We receive your offering. Your first obligation is to your ministry. But the first fruits offering is for whoever wants to give. And we believe in giving the whole of the first. What do you mean, Pastor? It may be your first day. It may be your first week. Some of us have given our first months. Something we save up for, we store up for, and I'll be teaching on that. For the purpose of being a blessing in the house on the first month. Whatever you're going to do today, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for your grace giving. It's because of that that we continue to do the wonderful things that we do. And the Lord continues to bless us to do those things. So we want to say thank you. We appreciate you. We're getting ready to go back into praise and worship. We thank God for the word. We know that you've been encouraged. Let's go back into praise and worship. God bless you. We love you. Show the love of the Lord. Lord.
Jesus, I know.